Hey guys, let's talk about impulse response. So there's construction going on around here. So if you hear some background noise, I'm really sorry. It's temporary. I don't know what to do about it. You guys can handle it, right? A little bit of noise in the background. I hope so. Also, my attachment for my tripod broke today. So right now I'm filming this with a camera that's on a tripod that is covered in tape. So that's a lot of fun. Um, I love when things go wrong. Yeah. So you've probably heard of, seen, and even used impulse response reverbs before. We sometimes call them IR reverbs. But what exactly is impulse response and what does it mean? Today I figured we would talk about the theory behind impulse response reverbs, how impulse response is used and how exactly it works, because I think it's important to understand the tools that we use as audio engineers. So first of all, let's talk about what impulse response is on the most basic level. So when someone is creating something using audio impulse response theory or technology, whatever you want to call it, uh, they're basically sending out a very short signal into a complex system. So this signal is what we call the impulse, and that makes sense, right? Because an impulse, at least in my mind, is associated with something that is quick, and the impulse signal is an extremely short sound. So what the signal is composed of can vary depending on the application, so you know the why you're doing impulse response work. But a lot of times when we're doing impulse response for an audio project, this impulse is gonna be a full spectrum sound covering the whole frequency spectrum. And that's basically because when we do impulse response work as audio engineers, a lot of the time it's because we wanna model an acoustic environment, acoustic space, or model out how a certain system affects the sound or something like that. And since different frequencies behave differently as they pass through the air and through different different physical materials, we often then want to model the whole range of audible frequencies. So this impulse signal is often full spectrum. Okay, so that's the impulse part of impulse response. So now let's talk about the response part. So the response part comes into play when we take this impulse signal and we send it out into a complex system. So what this complex system is will vary based on the project. But for example, when we're talking about impulse response reverbs that are designed to mimic real life acoustic spaces like famous concert halls, this often means that when they created the reverb, they probably sent someone out to one of those famous concert halls. So this person would have then sent out their impulse signal into the concert hall itself. So in this example, the complex system is the acoustic environment that is the concert hall. They would have then taken in data on how the audio from the impulse signal bounced around within that acoustic environment. And so often they'll do this using a measurement microphone, which is designed to have a more flat frequency response than, for example, our recording microphones. And so that data is how they then create the reverb. With any impulse response work, we send the original impulse signal out into a complex system because the complex system will change and affect that impulse signal. So it's these changes that we want to quantify and capture so we can recreate the way the complex system affects our audio. So people do impulse response work to model acoustic spaces, just like I mentioned a minute ago, but in the world of sound, we also do impulse response work to model specific gear setups or speaker systems. This means that we can use this technique to digitally model acoustic spaces amp setups, the outboard gear that we love so much, uh, highly desirable speaker setups, or the characteristic sound of a specific microphone. And you know, there's a lot more that we can use it for. We use this technique to then create some of our software simulations that behave just like these complex systems, creating a much more affordable and portable way to mimic these sounds that we love so much. So I think it's pretty cool. So yeah, that's the basic idea behind impulse response in the audio world. And of course, people use the same concepts to do impulse response work in other industries as well. So this is not something that's specific to the audio world. So for example, people use it for electronics, complex machinery design, and even economists have their own form of impulse response work. Oh, and the reason why we send out an extremely short signal, our impulse signal, and not a longer one, is because if we make it super short, then we can more accurately capture how our complex system changes the sound. Since in the example of an acoustic space modeling, the original signal won't still be playing there in the room while we collect our room reverb data. It sends the audio out there super quickly and then it gets out of our way so that we can collect more solid data. And you know, impulse response simulations are pretty awesome, but they aren't always the best. So they're just good for linear characteristics of sound. So they don't capture non-linear changes to our audio very well. So for example, IR isn't ideal to model things like distortion and compression. 
But yeah, I think that's about it for the basics of impulse response in the audio world at least. And I hope you guys found some of this useful. So please let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell if you wanna be notified whenever I come out with a new video. For today's question, I wanna know, what are your favorite IR pieces of software? So please let me know in the comments below. And I just wanted to say, thank you so much to my Patreon patrons. You guys 100% keep this channel going. If you're not a patron yet though, and you wanna help support my channel more directly and would like access to additional patron-only content, please consider joining my Patreon team at patreon.com slash Noise. So that's about it. I come out with new videos every Wednesday and thank you for watching. Okay. My mount for my tripod is barely holding together right now with a bunch of tape, so I'm gonna take it down and figure it out. Maybe get a new one. I don't know. Fun, 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 fun. Okay, see you guys next time.